All right, today we got Matt with Remedy Roofing. We have a flat roof replacement and a metal roof replacement. Our first part of the video, he's gonna show us the common areas where we have roof leaks on a, on a uh, flat roof. Then he's gonna show us how he's replacing it down on the lower level over here. And then we're gonna go across to the other side where we're doing a metal roof. And he's gonna show us the repair that he's doing over there. All right, so one of the first things you wanna look at when you're inspecting a flat roof that's gonna possibly need some repair or replacement if you want to hone in on penetrations. Any roofing system you have, a common place for leak will be penetration. So any of these stacks coming out, these plumbing pipe jacks, all of that kind of stuff. The next thing you want to look at, if we pan over here, the pitch of a roof, or if it has any sways in it, is extraordinarily important in a flat roofing application. Because anywhere you're going to have standing water, you're asking for trouble. So if we look out here, you can see where the pitch gets a little bit goofy over there. We need to make sure we're addressing that during our install. So another area that's of particular importance is anywhere where roof meets structure. In this case, it's around a chimney. It's another very, very common place we're gonna have leaks. Now, important for this particular application, since so we're using a TPO material, the metal here, when you use that TPO, we're switching from this, what's called a bitumen material to a TPO material. This metal flashing, this counter flashing, doesn't need to be changed because the TPO product will not stick to this, it won't adhere. So we've got to replace this with TPO coated metal. We'll come up underneath it here, make sure we're nice and sealed in, and this chimney's gonna be safe. All right, so another particularity, and this is specific to flat roofing, you're always gonna have AC units, ductwork, it's just kind of in the way. And when you go to re-roof, you've got to remove this stuff so you can roof underneath it, and then put it all back in place. So on this roof, we're, you know, we're trying to be price conscious for the client, take best care of them, but the truth is, this ductwork is in pretty good condition. So we've contracted with a local uh, HVAC company. They're going to remove this. We'll set it off to the side, store it down in the client's garage, roof underneath it, do what we need to do, and then coordinate with them when they put it back in place so we can fasten everything at the last minute like we need to. All right, so we're going to head down now and take a look at the install process. So follow me on down. All right, so you can see behind me is some of the install going on. This TPO material needs to be fully adhered. So what he's doing is heating that, rolling it down so it's a nice flush surface to the roof. As you can probably notice too, with how bad I'm squinting, one key benefit to this TPO material, it's extraordinarily reflective to the sun. So this client's actually gonna enjoy some reduced energy costs on his home. So one thing that's extraordinarily important on your roof is your underlayment. Okay, so in my hand here, I've got felt paper. And this is that kind of black tar paper you're probably used to seeing on roofs. The problem with this material, and granted, this is older, so it's a little brittle, but even the new stuff will do the same thing. It tears super, super easily, okay? So what we do on all of our roofs, including this metal one, is we upgrade to what's called a synthetic underlayment. Okay, so this does, it, it serves the same purpose as the felt paper, but you can't tear this stuff. You gotta cut it with a knife. It's gonna be a much better water barrier for your roof. Yeah, so every roof you do is gonna have its own specific problems or its own specific challenges. So it's important that you're keeping an eye out and you've got a keen eye as to how to identify those. So one thing we noticed almost immediately here is that the previous contractor did not install roof to wall flashing or counter flashing in this example. So if you look down here, as water cascades off this roof, it's just falling right down into this little abyss here. The problem with that is, is as water you know, comes down towards the side of the house up against the foundation, over time it can cause foundation issues. So what we're gonna be doing here is actually cutting into this brick installing counter flashing and then roofing up underneath it so this is all watertight. What we're looking at here, this is a box for a skylight that's going to be installed as we complete this roof. One important factor, and this is going to be very important any area that's got a high water traffic area or an area that's known to leak. Now penetrations on a roof, so your skylights, HVAC, plumbing jacks, all that kind of stuff, all those are penetrations I'm referring to. You want to surround those with an area called ice and water shield. That's what this product is here. One huge benefit of this is that it fully adheres to the deck, meaning no water can get underneath it once it's installed. Another thing that's great about this product is when you knock a nail into it or your roofing fastener, it'll actually seal up around that fastener, so we're not gonna have any kind of area where water can leak in over time. Okay, so it was pretty hot up there. We had to get down. The reflection of the roof actually were blinding us, even with the sunglasses on. And uh, Matt had one more thing to talk about, about the flat roof, about how long it lasts and the warranties involved. All right, so that's CPO flat roof. Um, it's it's going to carry a 20-year Firestone warranty. Um, it's a great warranty, it's one of the best in the industry you can get. It's important though, whether you have a flat roof, a shingled roof, whatever kind of roof you have, in respect to warranties, okay, you, you've still got to do your scheduled maintenance on a roof. So it's my recommendation, every three to five years, you get what I call a full tune-up on the roof, 
have a professional come out, take a look at it, and make sure that a small minor issue is not gonna balloon into a big problem. Okay, so with, with you uh, saying that, how much does something like that cost uh, whenever you do a tune-up? What, what is a normal fee that your company normally charges? Sure, yeah, good question. So when you look at a tune-up, obviously it's gonna be dependent on exactly what that scope of work is. Uh, but let's take a common example. So a roof that's maybe seven to eight years old, it's got some sun and some, you know, some minor storm related damages to, let's say the pipe jacks, there are some flashing issues. You could take the cheap and quick approach and just slap some caulking over top of that, but that's not the way you wanna do it. What you really should do is strip away the old material, make sure you put some waterproof material underneath it, and then re redo everything on top of it. So general rule of thumb on something like that, if it's a decent sized roof, there's maybe seven or eight pipe jacks and you know, maybe 40 or 50 feet of, of flashing to repair, do some high winds, you'd be around you know, 14 to $1,600, which granted, that doesn't sound like a small amount of money, but I can assure you that if you take those preventative measures, you're gonna avoid the five or $6,000 bill that results when you have a roof leak and now you've got sheetrock damage and potential mold problems, all that stuff. So that preventative maintenance is always going to be cheaper in the long run than waiting for a problem to pop up. Okay, uh, one more question I have for Matt is, uh, how do you tell the roof is bad just by walking up? As a trained professional, you and I, it's, it's almost easy. We can tell sure. that it's damaged just sure. by walking up to the roof, but how would you tell a client or a client would know to contact you if they're purchasing a property as they're walking up that the roof is already bad? Sure, okay, yeah. so I'm oversimplifying slightly by saying this, but a, a really easy way to tell if your roof has some issues is if you look up at it during kind of midday when the sun's out, if you see a lot of silver coloration or even some white look to it, that's an easy indicator that you've had a lot of granulation loss, okay? And when you have you know, granulation, those are like little rocks that sit on top of your shingles, that's your protection. So as that granulation starts to slough off, that's an indicator you've got a problem. Either you've got ventilation issues, so your roof is prematurely aging, or commonly in our market, you've had some hail damage and it's causing that granulation to slough off and now you're seeing the fiberglass underneath it. Okay, one more question for Matt. Uh, what is a good step that you can take if your roof is leaking, if your roof is leaking, what's a good step you could take to stop it before you show up to repair it? Sure, okay, yeah. so, you know, we wanna focus on safety here. So, generally speaking, I do not recommend that the average person go up and climb under their roof and start trying to goof around. It's, it's not the safest thing if you're not used to it. So my recommendation would be, so you're sitting in your house, you see a water stain coming up on the ceiling, I would recommend you get into the attic with some kind of pan or a bowl, put it underneath where that leak is so you can catch that water and mitigate further damages. All right, so that's Matt with uh, Remedy Roofing. That is, he just gave you some good facts about just things to look out for a roof or how to replace roofs. And if you have any questions for him, I'm gonna put his information right here at the bottom of the screen. And then if you have any home inspection questions, please give us a call and please like and share the videos. Thanks guys, bye.